Praise the living Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. I want us to rise up on our feet. I want us to sing this song to appreciate God. Baba eshe arubo ojo Baba eshe onite Chelsea or anybody, you know them. They will go and look for someone who's like 16 years old. They still know that there is strength and activity. Amen. And that's the reason why, as a youth, there must there is something you must understand, and that is the reason why you are here. You are just here because you want just to feature, but you are here because the Lord has packaged something for you, and I want you to receive it. So when I call a single prayer, pray as if you will not pray tomorrow. I don't know if you understand that. This is the time Jesus said something. He said, For, he said, For let us walk. Why it is day? For night cometh when no man will walk. I just want to cry upon the, uh, to the name of the Lord. Hey. I said, Father, there is a package on ground for me. Hey, man, three, two, see, and cut Father, I want to receive it. I said, I don't know if you want to take it. He said, Lord, there is a package. I said, Lord, I must receive this package. It must not elude me. Can you go ahead and begin to pray to God? Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, there is something you have prepared for me today. I must not miss it. Oh, Father. In the name of 
Jesus. There is something. There is something. There is something. Holy Ghost. I must not miss that thing. Hey, everything that will be put together by air to make me to miss it. I dismantle that. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. For those who that understand the power in the name of the they don't joke with prayer. Pray in the Lord. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we bless your name because we know there's a preparation for us. And that's why we are here in your presence. The Bible says well, we, are not, we have not come to the mountain that cannot be touched. But we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We have come to the spirit of God's men made perfect. We have come to the numbers of the angels. We have come to God, the creator of all. That's where we are, we are this morning. And we declare that Lord Jesus be glorified in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to appreciate, let's have our seat. Let's appreciate God with a clap offering. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. 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 Brother the Lord, I want to welcome you once again to this conference. Um, it's wonderful to have you here. Um, this is my prayer this morning that as you have come to the presence of God, the Lord Almighty will visit you in a new dimension in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a dimension that people operate, but there is another dimension. Therefore, there is an higher dimension. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the theme of this conference is the revival we need. The revival we need. And every one of us, there will be something in our hearts. And that's why I will urge every one of us to, to, to make sure that we listen with rap protection. So that we'll be able to understand and get what the Lord has for us in this, at this generation. But I want to put to you that as a youth, you are a youth today. We have our fathers at home and there was, there was a particular time they were like us. And now they cannot return to that state where you are now. Nobody can return to that. But if you have, you have passed that age, you can't return to that age. But at this age, is there a plan of God for us at this stage? And that's the reason why we have gathered together as children of God. So that we can actually look into the, into the mind of God and we receive something. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. Brother, the Lord, this morning we'll be looking at revival that we need. I want to believe that we have had the word revival. So, this is not the first time of we hearing the word revival. So, revival, what is revival? And what revival is not? Or what is not revival? So, it's very important for us to understand what is revival and what revival, so that we don't get to confuse ourselves and we think we are revived when we are not even revived and dead. And I'm speaking to every dead life in this place, every dead spiritual life in this place, that you receive a quickening of the spirit wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is revival? Sometimes we gather in our church and in crusade and we begin to clap our hands. We begin to sing, we begin to pray and say, yes, revival has started. And the question is that are we Revive at that stage. Meanwhile, the concept, the whole idea of putting together the, 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 the revival, or let me say the crusade, is that the people of God might be revived. And there is purpose for it. Yes, we clap our hands. Yes, we do a lot of things because we want God to touch us. And at this stage, we want to look into it, the revival. Thank God for the word article D. He said the revival. Not just a revival, but the revival we need. It's pointing to a, a particular revival. Please, the, our thank you, Bible. My time remains 15 minutes. Let me know. God bless you in Jesus' name. So, a lot of, a lot of us, we have misconception about what revival is, and that's the reason why we are here, because we want to know what revival is. So, what is revival? Revival is talking about a move. 
a move at a particular time. A movement. Now, I will, I will still talk about revival very well because, but let me take it bit by bit so that you understand what revival is. So, revival is talking about a move of God. A move of God at a particular stage. A move of God. So, now, at this point, we are looking at the exact revival. How does a move, or what, how does the move of God at every stage in life, every generation, we are, just, uh, we are still going to look at how the move of God moved, and that resulted to revival. A move of God. And let's look at um, Isaiah chapter 57. Let's look at Isaiah 57 and um, verse 15. Isaiah 57 verse 15 was actually telling us about who God is. Because Praise the living Jesus. Now God make us to understand that, oh, this is where I dwell. I don't dwell just in any place. Please, I want your attention to be here. There's something that God has for you to, today. We're just starting. So God is saying to us that if there's something in package, eh? all right, say, this is where I dwell. So God was actually saying, he said, I dwell in I, I lo a lofty place. I dwell I. Which means, when you're talking about I, I is not just a particular, but something that is higher. I. This is, that is where God dwells. So I want to say at that doctrine that say it's about reaching I where God is. Please take note of that. We are still going to come back on it. It's reaching I where God is. Reaching I. Now God is not just like static like that. It's always I. When you see him today here, it's I again tomorrow. I'm praying for understanding in this place. Now, God make us to understand this is where I dwell. That's part A of it. We're still going to look at part B because but part A is very important now. Now, if that is the case with God, God said, I dwell in I. Now, which means if anybody that wants to assess God must do what? Must aspire to move I. That's revival. We're still going to look at um, the combination of that Isaiah 57, verse 15. But I'm still dealing with the part F, part A of it. He said, I dwell I. Now, someone said, I want to see God, which means there's a desire to do what? To reach I. There's a particular junction where you are. Okay, let me come down and say, okay. For example, now, you, there's a particular knowledge stage you are in the word of God. But immediately you, you see other person and say, wow, this person is more knowledgeable to, than me in the word of God. Which means there is a dimension, another level where that person is. Do I, for example, do I le at the level like this, and that person has a level like this. So that's which, which means the difference between that place and this place is what we call what? Moving forward. Moving on. So revival is when the children of God, and let me just quickly mention this, that when I'm talking about revival, this message is not for unbeliever. Because the message for unbeliever is repent that their sin may be forgiven. That's the only message you can give to unbeliever. But now we are speaking to believers. Those who understand. Those who know that yes, they have a taste of the word of God, of the life of God in them. But because of one thing, and which we are going to look at again. Because of one thing or the other, they have, what? They have remained static. That was the case of the Israelites. But still going to look at that, how people of God, they come down. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. And let's move from there. We're still going to come back to Isaiah 57, but I want you to get it very well. So, when we're talking about God, I, and people are aspiring to meet him, I, that is where the revival comes. You are not just static. You aspire, you desire to meet God where he is. So, let's deal with that part A of Isaiah 57, verse 15. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 64. We're just looking at verse 1 there. It's true for Isaiah 64. Terrible 
things which we looked not for. Thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not had, nor perceived by the air, neither has the eye seen of all God beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. Thou meetest him, the rejoicest, and walkest righteousness. Right, let's stop. The, please, I'll, I don't know what's happening to this mic. It's failing. God bless us in Jesus' name. Right. Um, in the verse 54, the word of God was making us to understand that the, the prophet, now, if you look at your scripture very well, you will see that for those who have some part of that scripture written in red, you will understand that that place was not written in red. Praise God. I don't know if some people have a scripture in the Bible like that. That place was not written in red. Which means it wasn't a direct from God. But the prophet himself was actually aspiring to do something. And he said, oh, oh, thou would thou rend the heaven and come down. So I, I, I want to just pick a point from that point. What you want to look at is here, revival is when God come down. Please, I want you to notice that. Because we're supposed to join everything together. And we understand what revival is. So, he said, revival is when God come down, comes to us. So, revival is when God comes to us. So, when God comes to us, verse 2 was saying, first, I'm still looking at, okay, that the mountains might flow down at thy breath. Which means they know that if God should come at a particular generation, something will move. Verse 1 said, so that the mountains, my what? So when we experience revival, it's when we have God with us. When we have revival, it's when God come down and do what? And do something. Because there's no way God will come down. And the mountains we know. Every mountains. Mountain we flee. Not only verse 2 say that. When God come down, as when metal fire burn it, the fire causes the water to pour to make thy name known to thy adversary. There's something where God is involved in a particular life. That life can never still remain static. So we are still going to put them together. Psalm, I mean, Psalm 57 say God dwells somewhere high. 64 say God come down. Is he talking about the same thing? We are still going to join them together. God bless us in Jesus' name. God bless us in Jesus' name. I want to say, and I say revival. Is God's manifestation in a special way? I'm still dealing with that Isaiah 64. It's a God's manifestation. I'm only giving us an, uh, a, 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 an example now. God's manifestation. Okay, okay let's quickly look. At, um, let, let me just give you an example now. Now, looking at what happened to Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 2. So just to explain to you what I mean by God's special way, manifestation. Now, he said, revival is a special manifestation of God's presence and God's power. You can put it expressly like that. God, so revival is a special manifestation of God's presence. When God is present, there's a special manifestation that happens. We're still looking at this and we're just examining what to revival is. We have not even looked into what actually what can make the revival to come. We have not looked at it. And where we and I, where we fit in, where we need to stand. Now, I want to say that, now Peter, look at Peter now. Just open your scripture to Acts chapter number two. Just open it. The Bible will make us to understand, we will not read much because of the time. Now, the Bible will make us to understand that they all gather somewhere and they were praying. That's upper room, the of Pentecost. And the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost fully come, it says something happened to them. They received the Holy Spirit. Now, I just want to explain to you what the special manifestation, talking about manifestation of God's presence and God's power. Now, someone was saying something. He said, look at it. He said, when, you, when, when God's presence is in a somewhere or some, some place, there is something that usually happens. The unusual will happen. And that will call this driver. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. The sermon that Peter preached on that day 
was never prepared. Now, what am I trying to explain to you that when God is present in a place, it doesn't matter how your sermon is or preparation you have, though it's very good to prepare, but when God is present, there is also usually a manifestation. God will never be present in a particular place. And that place will remain the same. And that's what Isaiah 64 was actually telling us. He said, oh, when you come, the mountain they will do what? They will just flow away. I don't know the kind of mountain that people are facing this generation. The only thing that mountain recognizes is what? Is the presence of God. Now, let me now tell you something. For every generation, God has wanted to manifest himself. And that is where we are going. Every generation. You know, it, it have to, it, we have to cry for our generation at this time. That's why we are gathering together to look at things happening. In the time of the apostle, the Bible says in the last day, the book of Jue was actually saying in the last day, I'll do what? I will pour out my spirit. And when I pour it out, something will just happen. See, the spirit of God will not just come a place and will just be static. It's impossible. And therefore, after the spirit come down, they do what? Prophesy. And begin to listen. The spirit of God can never be present in a place and have life. You know, my brother was reading a prayer point the other time. He said, if you know that you have been reading the Bible before and uh, today it doesn't, it doesn't even interest you, he said, you need revival. Now, the spirit of God because that is what makes the difference. Now, let me come back to Acts chapter number two. Now, in Acts chapter number two, eh, Peter did not prepare any message. Have you, did you see him? They were just praying. And the Bible says that when Peter finished, oh, cannot just read 37, verse 37 to us. See, 36 and 37. Now, when they had the, the word of Peter, they were pricked. In they, their they were pricked. And look at it. They, they were just pricked. A prepared message. Just that God was present. Okay. And said unto Peter. And the son of Peter. And to the rest of the apostles. All right. Men and brethren. Okay. What shall we do? What shall we do? Thirty seven. Okay, thirty eight. Then Peter said unto them. He told them. Repent. Repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. For the remission of sins. Okay. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. For the promise is unto you mm -hmm. and to your children. Next verse. And Next verse. All, and with many others. We, and with many other words, did he testify and exhort, okay. saying, Thing. save yourself from this and, and toward generation. All right. Let's continue. Then they that gladly received this. And now look look at that. They that gladly eh? received his word were baptized. Were baptized. And the same day. At the same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls. Unprepared message. Kai. 3,000 souls. And today, we need to go and pray. Hey, Shagraba Labara, we will speak it on. Oh, yes, we begin to do it. And when we get there, yes, God will manifest. But how many souls are come to Christ? Is there revival? So, revival is when God is present in a place and there is a conviction in the heart. Genuine one. Today, we have to persuade. If you know you are here and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please raise up your hand. People will not raise up your hand. Ah, this is a generation that we have to cry a lot. You don't need to raise up your hand. You will be crying when you sleep in the place of, the, of our fathers. What are we not talking about? I have some of our fathers that I just quoted some things. I will be reading to us when I get, when I get into time, to place. In their own time, what they did. And how they experienced. Now, in every generation, God had wanted to move. That is it. Someone was, I was just, I was just meditating and I was, I, was like, I was reading through something. He said, look at it. He said, you are acting for the Holy Spirit. Maybe your acting is just like, oh, Father, I need the Holy Spirit. And they just rate it 40%. Kai. And they just open heaven. And they saw how much God is eager as you are praying. God is eager. And they just open God's percentage of eagerness. And they saw 1,000. Yay. 40 to 1,000. Which means God is more eager to pour out. But something is blocking him. At every generation, God had wanted to move. Something is blocking him. In the days of Peter, they were on prepared message. They were prepared message. The Bible says, and they were added unto them every day, 5,000, 3,000, just because God was present in the spirit. 
We're going to look at it, how they did it, and how things move in their own time. And in their own time, and we are just, the, the, the subject of the story is that a generation is coming behind us. And if that generation will, will seek the face of God, they will tell this generation that we are not serious. Let me just mention this again. Another definition for revival is revival is when there is outpouring of the Spirit of God. Outpour. Outpour means God pour down the Spirit. In the last day, I will pour out. That's revival. Paul says something. Say, be filled with the Holy Ghost. No, be, don't be drinking with wine. But be filled. When you are filled with the Spirit, there is a revival in you coming up. Praise the living Jesus. Let me just mention quickly before I move to the next point. What revival is not? A lot of people have been telling us revival, revival. I've just told you that revival is outpouring of the Spirit of God. When God comes down, that is where revival. The presence of God that gives us a manifestation that is different from the normal. If we, if we all gather together every Sunday in our churches, and we never experience the presence of God in the mighty as of old. Now, let me just put it that way. As of old. It means our garden is just like a, a social garden. What makes the difference for every of our gathering is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when that is not coming, we have to shake our brain very well. Why are we not gathering? And let's go to clubs and gather with them because if you go to club, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing will happen in the club. So now let's come together and say, wow, we, we say we have come to Christ. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And this is the breath of the Holy Spirit. And where is what is happening nowadays? So why are we? Let's move forward. Revival is not when there's an increase in church members. It's not a revival. It's just a it's just a, 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 an extract of revival. You get to some places and say, wow, the church is increased. And that's revival. Who told you that's revival? People can use mental, mental knowledge to gather people together. They will psych, they will psych them, psychology. You just see people flow. That's, but when I'm talking about it, it is good that people are many in the church, but that's not the original. And they, even the people that are many, that are even come, that you saw there, are they even converted or genuinely convinced with their sin? Have you asked yourself? Have you asked yourself? Let's move forward because of our time. Revival, let me just put this one again. You write it down. Revival is when there's a genuine conviction of sin. Genuine conviction. Ah, I have seen the Holy Spirit. You begin to cry. But these days, ah, people, they, they will still speak it on. Ragadabo, shagadabo, ah, after they have seen. And they will be crying. Why is this boy just making fool of himself? You are speaking the God. Why is about to be saying, Father, have mercy on me? Is that the revival? Now, revival is not how good or organized the churches. We go to some churches today. In fact, you see AC. It will blow in you. I said, wow, revival is, this church is making sense. Who told this making sense? That is not revival. You have churches today, they have the best set of equipment. Targets. Set drums. That is not revival. It should be an extract of revival. Just a frame of revival. But that is not the original revival. So get it very well. Now, I, 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 I just put something. Say, okay, you're talking about a genuine conviction of sin. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 37, it says, and they were pricked. Now, who does that? Who does that? Who does that? The Holy Spirit. And it must be, it must be given the, the enablement, I mean, the enabled environment to move. Every cause to move at a generation. Now, if the Holy Spirit is not given that chance to move, nothing will move. You want to see people converted. You just preach a five minute message, and people say, yeah, get, get, get. They begin to cry. When they get to their house, they, could not, they are not settled. That's the Holy Spirit. But in our days, you will preach like this. Hey, 
You see, see people. You want to give your life to Jesus, raise up your hand, come to the altar, and they'll pray for you, go back. And the next one year, you are just ordinary church member. Is that revival? Let's look at what revival is. Revival is the outpouring, and only the outpouring. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> and only the outpouring of the Spirit of God can bring what we require. God is present everywhere. Praise the living Jesus. Is God not present with us? When you are at home, is God not present with you? When you are in the farm, is He not present with you? But there is a presence that is different from that presence. It can only be brought by the Holy Ghost. And that is what we call revived presence. God is omnipresent. That is true. If you will go to the inside that, that, that will know you are there. But he may not manifest himself as Jehovah in that place. There are different manifestations of Holy Spirit. But the one that brings to the Bible It's when the Holy Spirit have a free course to move in the person's life. Praise the living Jesus. So we gather here today so that we understand that we are missing a lot in our generation. We are missing a lot. Now in John chapter 16 verse 8, can you just look at it very well so that to to portray the point, in John 16 verse 8, Jesus was giving us an emphatical statement. Jesus was giving us Amen. Please. Okay. John 16 verse 8. And when, he comes, and when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will, the he will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness. And of just Thank you very much. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. What makes a generation to be different is the outpouring of that spirit. And today in our generation, we see less of that, which means God is not is, is, is incapacitated because of some things. Don't forget, I mentioned initially that this message is for the believers who know they are standing in Christ. Because those are the people that are vessels to carry this revival. No, I was saying something the other time. Okay, people will come to the front and say, raise up your hand, and the lights, blah, 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 and they will pray for them. You actually see a person crying for their sin. I don't know. You get to a level. And you begin to cry, and they say, wow, this is what I have been doing. I was reading Ephesians chapter 2. I was just meditating on Ephesians chapter 2. It's like I was, someone was, Ephesians chapter 2, can you just look at something? This man was describing the life we were living before. Come and look at how we should be crying. And say, Father, I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I say, wow, thank God I am saved because this is what I was doing before. If it is about two, can we just read from verse two? We are in the time past. You walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. Prince has no longer to be given to Disobedience. If you read through, I, there's no time I would have said you to read. But if you go and read it, don't, come, come and look at it. That is what should be, that's what all the, the people will be doing the life of a sinner. You will be crying. But these days, the Holy Spirit is not opening the eyes of sinner again to cry. And look at the person that will cry. See, if a person should cry for his sin, he will think twice before he go back to that sin. Today, people are not crying. It's very easy for them to say, oh, let's just walk through again. We'll come back again and do forgiveness. Please, I want you to be gathering them together because we're going to put them together now. Just gather the point together. So we now know where you and I we are standing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, today is, is a wonderful day. For some people that are not sure of their salvation in this place. Some people are here, they are not sure of their salvation. But by the time we we'll end this, this conference, you will go out with an assurance of a genuine salvation. Holy Spirit, thank you. Father, we bless you. Now, let's not ask ourselves, how does revival come? 
And that's the next thing I want to show you. How does revival come? Someone will say, and say, well, he said, oh, preacher, I want to tell you that revival comes by prayer. Yes! Revival comes by prayer. Yes! And in fact, prayer is the arm that moves the world. Oh, let me put it this way. No, don't let me put it that way. So that you understand it. Now, prayer is the move, is that force that moves the ant that moves the world. It's very good. Prayer. We are going to look at prayer very well. We now see how prayer works. But prayer is never the first thing that brings revival. Prayer is never the first thing that brings revival. And for every boy that wants to experience revival in our age, in our own generation, at this stage we are, we want God to move as he moved in the time past. We want God to move in our own days as in the days of the old. There is, prayer is not the first thing. Then what is the first thing? The first thing is repentance. The book of Joel chapter 2. Come, let's go to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. Now, Joel understood something. And that was the reason why it is very necessary for this generation. If we must experience, you know, God was speaking to Joel. Joel was a prophet and um, he was actually speaking to the children of Israel. And so, wow, this is what God is saying. You have to understand that some, something that's very important that God is saying to this generation. He was speaking to this generation. And the same thing is applicable to us today. Prayer is never the first thing. You see people praying. And some this verse, uh, verse was even saying that, oh, he said, if I if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will never, no matter how you pray, you will never be visited. So prayer is not the first thing. We have a lot of people praying today. Not that people are not praying for a revival. Not that people are not praying that people should be evangelized. I think you go look, look at something. So the first thing is that, oh. Now, can we just read it? Joel chapter 2, verse 12 to 38. 38. Therefore, why there is sign? Give me your heart. Come with fasting, weeping, and murmuring. Don't tear your clothes in your grief, but tear your heart instead, return to the Lord your God. For he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfalling love. He is the eager to relent and not punished. Now the Bible was actually saying to, you know, the prophet was speaking and he was saying to them, I said, wow. He said, this, the only thing you need to do is to come to God. Rend your heart. Don't rent your clothes. That's only your clothes. Rend your heart. Repent of that sin. Come with fasting. Come to the Lord. The first thing is that you come back to the Lord. What is God saying that you have done wrong? Psalm 66, verse 18. As long as you open Isaiah 59, verse 2. Very fast, please. The okay. Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not hear me. Isaiah 59, verse 2. Isaiah 59, verse 2. Can you please tell you that? Because your iniquity have separated between you and your God. Okay. And your sins have hid his face from you. And his sins that he will face. not hear. That he will not hear. Okay. For your hands are defiled with blood. And your fingers with iniquity. Okay. Your lips have spoken lies. Okay. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Okay. None call it for justice. Not any pleaders for truth. Let's talk about that. I've gotten what I want to use. Your iniquity has separated. God did not say that you have not prayed. He said, Your iniquity has stopped my hand from moving in your generation. We're going to examine iniquity now. We're going to examine what is even keeping the hand of God back from us. You know, many of us, we, we, we actually understand that, oh, wow, it's very good to serve the Lord. Yes, we do a lot of things. Yes. But the point is that we do it with the all of our hearts. And what is God saying about that? 
We love the things of this world more than the things of God and we expect God to move in our days. It's never possible. And the question that God will be asking us in our days is that, oh, there are a lot of fantastic things in the world. Amen. There are a lot of many things, beautiful things. Go to Paris, you will see a lot of things. Go to America, go to they even introduce it to us, many things. Yes, and we accepted them. Yes, it's very good. They help us in our days. But do you know that these are the things it's very easy for the devil to do what? To deceive us with those things and we enter into iniquity. The first iniquity that we, are, we examine in this place is that people create idols in their hearts. That's the first iniquity. Now, idol doesn't mean that you are bowing down for one status, status, and it also means that when you regard something in your heart more than the love of God. Now, the point is that let's ask ourselves: How many time do we spend on our phone? And how many time do we place, do we spend in our on our knee? Praise the living Jesus. And there is no way Scripture was making us to understand that you know where where your treasure is, and that is where your heart will be. If you have a trail with God in heaven, your heart will be with God. And there's no way your heart will be with the of, the of this world that you're not going to see. It's not possible. And God is saying to us that, wow, something is happening in the earth. There's a lover of the things of this world more than the lovers of God. That is the first thing. Praise the living Jesus. Now let's come back to Isaiah 57 where I said I have to complete so that we complete that statement. God said, I dwell in I and where? And love the place. Do you still remember? Do you still remember? I dwell in I and love the place. That, see, we have not completed that verse, and that we need to complete it because God is a God of completion. Praise the living Jesus. Let's go back to Isaiah 57. Fifteen. Uh, let's complete. I love to one. All right. That inhabited eternity. Whose name is Holy? I dwell in the high and holy place, holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and Now, place. let's stop there. We are going to complete that statement. God was actually saying, he said, yeah, this is where I dwell. I dwell very high. People have to reach desire because they get to me. But there is something that is very important also. Notice. I also dwell. With what? I don't, people are not reading the scripture. Let's open it. Isaiah 57. Now, not that I only dwell on I, but what I do, I do, I do what? I also dwell with what? With a man or a person with what? I want King James to read it. King James, King James, King James. Let's complete it. For thus says the I and love to one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. Uh -huh. With him also that with is of a country. Also, and now in English, sorry, we are going to. With him also. When you are introducing also, you are joining something together. Also, you want to you want to introduce another person now. Now, he said, and also with what? With him, that is what? Contrite and humble spirit. Humble spirit. To the what? To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And the point I'm raising in this place is that God is saying to us that reaching out your desire to get revival in our days. A steady increase in your spiritual growth, that is revival. A continual increase. You are not just saying, the, the position you are today, that's not where you are tomorrow. That is revival. Now, for you to achieve that, God is saying that, this is what I do. I dwell with what? A contract, a man of a contract spirit. and of, of, uh, To revive him. Which means the reaching eye we are talking about, the desire we are talking about cannot be achieved. Now, God moving in our days cannot be achieved, except we do what we are of that heart that God needs. And that is we call brokenness. Now, God is very afraid. Listen to this very well. God is very afraid to package his vessel, I mean to package his trail in a vessel that has not been broken. Or that is not submissive. God is very afraid in our days. We have a lot of unbroken Christians. Galata 2.20. Galata 2.20. Yeah. 
with Christ. Okay. Nevertheless, I live. Uh -huh. Yes, not uh -huh. I, uh -huh. but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul actually told us, he said, look, I am not the one living the king. It's very easier for God to hold a man that has been broken. I said, wow, I am putting my treasure inside of this man. Let's go. And the point is that are we crucified with Christ? Genuinely. In other words, we still have some attitude in us that even God, if heaven should just view us and say, wow, this, we cannot possess that increase I'm talking about. Are you broken? Have you asked yourself? Are you submitted? Submissive to God. Submissive to your other authority. Parents at home. I'm going to say this one is not ready for now. It's not, you, it's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. It's not, that's what everyone is saying. It's not ready. We are not ready in our days. A person that God will say, Sister, you need to wake up at 12 o'clock. PM, AM. He says, Sister, you need to wake up at. Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to someone that will easily submit. Not the person that says, Ah, this is the voice of the devil. You are not yet broken. Praise the and you expect that the only the, the oil of gladness will increase in you. It's not possible. That auction will not increase. And nowadays we are limited because of a lot of things. People will not repent from their sin. They will say, Go on. Imagine a brother, a brother, a brother, fight the same church, and the only thing will move. It's never possible. They live a brokenness in our life. Now let me tell you this, a lot of people they stayed in a particular situation, in a particular spiritual stage, they may be there for five years, just God, God is still waiting, I am waiting, this man is not broken. I'm still waiting. I told you again, I said, God is, God is, he finds it easy to pour out his trial in a vessel that is broken, that is submissive, that is interpretation. The Lord help us in Jesus' name. Because of our time, I want to move forward. Because, please, what, what, please let me know. Let me know what my time remains, so that I can move where I want to go. Okay, let's open our scriptures to the book of John, chapter twelve, verse twenty-four. And let's look at what Jesus said about this matter. We want to see people that do what that we get the things of God. John chapter twelve. John chapter 12, verse 24. Brokenness. Brokenness. John chapter 12, verse 24. Oh, yeah? Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Praise the living Jesus. What, what did Jesus say? He said, except that corn, and that seed dries. That in this place, we are talking about a total brokenness but submissive to God. The things of the world does not even matter to you again. To us again. Say, is it with that even the things of this world? If you know you don't want to have my motor car in your life, raise up your hand. Well, it's, you know, I'm not saying that motor car is good. I mean, it's not it's bad. Or vehicle is good. But, you know, you see people that say, my desire, my first desire in life is not the things of this world. It's how I will see Unbelievers, what be saved? And Jesus was trying to say, He said, Oh, don't be anxious. And that was the one, don't be anxious with the things of this world. He said, But seek first what the kingdom of God and what and its righteousness. What you are looking for in the world, this thing will bring it. They will just draw them up, they will follow you. The kingdom of God will draw them. Three of times they will follow you. But how many of us today, we are still looking the extra thing? We never, how many of us one day or the other that we have met on our knee? I begin to pray. This brother in my church, hey, it's not safe. Lord, are you just Kai. Okay. In the days of the father of the host, like people like Smith, John Smith, uh, Martin Luther Beach, they actually travel in prayers. He said, all the, 
all we want to do, all we want to see in our lives is that we want souls to be saved. John Wesley was saying that, okay, this is what you are going to, every, all the men that, the highest, they list 12 things like this. And the number one was that how men will be saved. John Wesley. And every of their prayer, they would just stand like this. Hours, they are there. Kai. And you say that people will not do what? Will not experience the move of God. Let's move to the next one. You know, talk about repentance, talk about brokenness, and the next is prayer. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. You know, I, I said, sorry, prayer is that force that moves the hand, that moves the word. Is that force? Tell me a man that does not pray, and I will show you a man that is like. And as, as individual, the revival we are talking about because individual comes across, I mean, revival comes across individual, it comes across what? Family? Praise the living Jesus. What is happening in our family? Are we expressing the revival we are talking about? Now, revival comes across associations, a nation like our country. Now, for individual expecting revival, do you want your eye to remain glow, to remain shining to what? To the understanding of the scripture. The word of God makes us to understand when Paul was praying in Ephesians 1, verse 17, 16, 17, 18, and he was saying, I say, I pray that the Lord will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Revelation now. Flooded with your eyes of understanding, be flooded with light. That you might be able to know the hope of what? Of his calling. And it's what a re individual revival is that in your prayer life, if you have been praying, okay, you started for 10 minutes, but you begin to pray in tongues, yeah. Maybe you cannot even pray in tongues, you are praying in understanding. Holy Wallon, you say, God, I worship you, I thank you. And tomorrow you are still 10 minutes again. Next tomorrow, 10 minutes. The revival is not revival. Though it's very good because you are still progressing. But that's not revival. You must move from 10, 10 minutes to what? 11 minutes. Kai. God is increasing in you. That's the outpouring. There's, there's an increase of the spirit in you. Now, we, we need people that will be dissatisfied with their spiritual life. I say, no, I say, you are reaching high where God is. Except you are dissatisfied with that status quo in your life. Revival has not yet happened. That's, I'm talking about the individual level. You know, in which of time, some people will have, they will have gone to a state, they will work with God. If you just shake them like this, you'll not, you'll not be okay again. I don't know if you have that. Uh, let me, okay, some people will have, they will have touched God now. They will have, they would have gone with God to, the, to a, a, an extent that if you shake them like this, I say, ah, brother, how are you? And you go. In the next time, you are not okay again. There's a transfer of what? Not only the outpouring again, conviction in you. We are, I will be telling you, what are you doing? Kind. In our days. If, you, if we have not, if it is not even stated in the scripture, we will say that is how Christianity is. But let me tell you, when the spirit of God comes down, there's a difference. There's a difference. Talking about individual level, how is our spiritual life? Let's put one side. But I'm talking about a walk with God. Yes. We can do a lot of things. A lot of things. We can preach. That's good. It's very needful. But I'm talking about the personal life, personal relationship. Revival must occur. You are not, you are not satisfied with where you are. Because there is a template in the scripture. And say, I have God, I have not got it to where Peter got. What is happening in my life? You want to experience something. And God is experiencing. You know, there's something about God. When you are making that move. Do I, say, do I was the one that understood the whole situation? Is that the first thing? Is that, is that come back, all of you. Where are you going? Come and repent. If you repent, now we tell you the next step. Let's go to Judges chapter 2 again. And look at what he said in verse 14, 15. When they repented, he, said, he told them again. He said, this is the next step. Judges chapter 2. <coughs> Let's move fast, please. Let's move fast. Verse 16. 
Let's let's, the people. Let's, let's have a 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. And call, call a solemn, solemm assembly. assembly. Eh? Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Okay. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Praise the living Jesus. He said, after you have repented, please gather everyone again. We want to go and call upon the name. We want to go and pray. And there is something this generation must understand about prayer. That prayer is not, see, it's not, um, let me just define prayer for you so that you understand what prayer means. Prayer is a communication with God. It's a communion with God. Prayer is a communion with God. You are talking and God is speaking to you back. Praise the living Jesus. You know, many of us, we have not understood that in prayer, God speaks. In fact, let me tell you, most of the instruction I get, I got it from the word of God, but until I prayed, instruction are not make valid in me. So which means most of the instruction I get, I do what? I get them in prayer. I don't be praying, you just hear, I keep quiet. You be quiet for 15 minutes and God is still speaking. And God is just telling you something. Because he, you are speaking. Prayer is not monotonous. It's what? It's communication. If you are speaking, and God was what? Was to reply you. Praise the living Jesus. Now, do I understood it? After you have repented, let's go back to God. We want to go and pray. Because prayer is not the first thing. You have to repent of your sin. God bless us in Jesus' name. So, the first thing I say, after the devil comes, you have to do what? You have to repent of your sin. Be broken. God wants to pour out something in a life that is broken. That is humble. Submission. And I also say that when talk about prayer, the type of prayer that we need, not just a prayer, you know, there are a lot of prayers that we pray today. You know, we pray about Ogun oh, delay. Yeah, it's very good. Praise the living Jesus. But a person that is expecting a revival, much of a prayer doesn't center on Ogun oh, delay. It's the outpouring of the Spirit of God. The disciples were not praying for Ogun delay in the upper room. Amen. What were they praying? And when they are okay, what happened? So we have to get this anyway. It's very good. The Bible says that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. What? With what? The principality. We get powers. One take that in your other. Boss, why do you want to come and you say anyone? They will get you. That's what they will say. They will get you. It's very good. When you get to it, to finish them, it doesn't cost you like much minutes. You tarry. You don't tarry in no good day. You don't tarry there. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. You don't tarry in the, all those ogun. You don't tarry there. But what is it, every day begin to pray that it's very good. Pray it every day. But that you now settle your life on ogun delay, you will be finished. But the major thing is that he said the Bible says something that in the days of his power there shall be a willing people. The power is the Holy Ghost. People will just be willing to contact God. Is that, would thou come down and read the heavens? Let mountains skip in your presence. What is your prayer? What is your major prayer? Your prayer is, oh, Father, I need an outpouring. Hey, right, as you are speaking, it does say, Lord, there is an outpouring. Hey, Father, there must be a spirit in me. The spirit of God, that quickness. The Bible says, it is the spirit that quickness and the flesh do what? Profit nothing. If you want to move on spiritually, you want your life to be revived, you do what? You need the Holy Spirit. God bless us in Jesus' name. So, most of your prayer must centered. You know, Jesus was saying that in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, he was saying something. He said, he said and you shall receive power when the words. That is a promise. What did I call it? It's a promise. The next verse, verse 9, says something. He said, Thank you. The next verse says something. He said, But ye tarry. Command in there. If you, see, a promise follow command. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter number 1.
verse 8. Okay. Holy Ghost is come. All right. Samaria. All right. Okay, let's go to verse 4. I think verse 4 is talking about something here. Let's go to verse 4. Chapter 1, verse 4. Promise of the Father, which means you have to. The command is that you have to tally. What's the prayer? Is it good? Is talking them to ask them to pray? No. But don't forget, I said that it's very important that you begin to fight your. The Bible says, "Be strong in the Lord." You know that you'll be able to do what? You'll be able to wrestle with what principality. You only need strength, and strength comes by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. So major, the major prayer. Thank you, sister. Sit down. The major prayer you pray is what? Lord, I want to be filled more. The Paul was speaking in Ephesians chapter 4, and he was speaking, chapter 5 rather, he was speaking, I think, in verse 16. He was saying, do not be unwise, don't be like people who are not even don't have wisdom, don't be, don't be, don't be filled with wines and uh, in, in essence, but be ye be filled with what? With the Holy Ghost. That is how you can increase daily. And as much as you increase, there is a strength, hey, there is a strength that when the spirit of God comes there is a strength generated in you when the spirit of the Lord comes there is a strength generated in the place of prayer you tarry and you get a place of prayer and begin to say ah, I don't know we have spent almost this hour we just thought we have just spent 10 minutes it can only come by the spirit I don't forget I say when you get to a place of prayer you don't just place on prayer that is not okay what you need most is the spirit of God. It's you. And when you get to a particular point, you begin to travel. I want to mention that traveling now. The next thing is traveling. A lot of us, there's something we got wrong in this generation and noticed very well. It's the aspect of traveling. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. I know something here. All right. Let's look at Isaiah 66, verse 8. We still come back to what Joe actually said. Isaiah 66, verse 8, and Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. I want two people to read. Oh, open that. Thank you. All right, please. Isaiah 66, verse 8. Let's look at it. Who has had such a thing? Who has seen such thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. Praise the living Jesus. As soon as what? Zion traveled, she do what? She does what? She brought out. Now, a, a beautiful example of traveling is when a, a woman wants to give birth. Praise the living Jesus. Shall the woman bring forth her son? Now let's look at. I would have loved your aspect of it because there is a talking about traveling. We have to understand that it's very important uh, uh, for this uh, topic. Uh -huh. Now, the Bible makes us to understand that Zion traverse and it brought out of. Now, in the place of prayer, there's called what, something we call traveling. Before something can be breathed in you, which means you don't just start that prayer, you end it there. You can do what? To travel. Galatians 4, verse 19. Please, Mike. My little children of whom I travel in bed again until Christ be formed in you. I travel. Paul mentioned it again. He said, "If you don't rob B, and it's you shaking the B, and it's too late, but I mean, too late, but you rob B too late, but until there is something formed in you. When last did you pray for someone who is and 
someone that is spiritual is, is, is still like a low, low key in your, in your fellowship. When life did you go on your, on your knee and begin to intercede? Say, Father, this brother, like brother, this sister, like brother, Father, I pray. Holy Ghost, let the, the light of God, let it begin to shine upon his face. Ah! If you begin to do that for him, one day, second day, third day, you begin to do it just continually. One day, you just see the, the brother coming up and begin to share revelation for you and say, ah, Lord, my prayer has been answered. You begin to glorify God. Because there's somebody that is traveling in prayer. Many of us, we don't understand that the Holy Ghost himself travel for us. Romans chapter 8. The Bible says that we, we do not know how to pray as we ought to. But there is a spirit. He does it not just with what? Groanings. Hey. Even the Holy Ghost himself is traveling. Hey. Even the Holy Ghost, as long as you think you are praying. Now, the Holy Ghost will pray when you start praying. But I said, God, I don't know that yet. I begin to do it. He will not even speak. Holy Spirit will not speak. He will just be like, mm, travel. There's someone that wants to give back. The Bible says, with goodness. When last do you, somebody facing a particular situation in your fellowship, I mean your church, and begin to say, Lord, that is where revival will come. People who are concerned about souls of men, God will bless us in Jesus' name. He said, reaching eye cannot be done without prayer. You can't increase your spiritual life except you pray. So where we, do we need revival? Now, I want to speculate now, just to close. I want to now, where do you need revival? Because we have to understand. Yes, we have been saying, how does revival come? You have to repent. You have to be broken. You have to call upon God. You have to pray. You have to ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But where do you need it? You begin to pray for that. Number one is that you need it in your word life. Someone say word life. W O R D. And immediately, that there's something you must understand. Brethren, please, I want to close. And it, this last aspect is very important because you will be praying now something. You know, when I get to a place of prayer, it's a revelation that God has given unto me. Sorry. Ah, you don't, sometimes you don't even know what to pray. You go to, you go to pray in other tongues. Say, Father, I don't know what to pray. Holy Ghost. Hey, because there's a revelation in you that you cannot even contain. I was praying one day with a brother, and this is what the, the only thing just opened my eyes. I've been reading Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 for a very long time. I did not know anything. I was even thinking I know. But this day, the, the Lord opened my eyes. Kai, come and look at how I prayed. That is what we call the Spirit of God. What did he say? You know, he said, for the word of God is quick. It's active. It's sharper. Hey. And I will just say, brother, let us pray. Where is the quickness of the, spirit of the word in my life? Holy Ghost. Where is the sharpness of the word? Kai. Say, father, I want to, I want to explain the sharpness. If God said the word of God is quick, and there's no evidence of that in your life, you need revival. And I begin to pray. Say, Lord, where is the sharpness of the word in my life? Where is the power? Hey, you don't know the meaning of power. You speak the word, something change. That's power. He said, Lord, you say your word. He said, it's not my word like fire. And I want like an armor that breaks into pieces. Kai, and I speak the word and something is just still standing. Kai, I need revival. Whatever God has said about his word and it's not happening in your life, you do what? Go back to go and repent. Say, Lord, I've been doing some rubbish things. What is wrong with me? If God has testified to the word of God and said, my word is, he said, is the discerner of the, of the intent of the earth. Kai. What? You will just hear some people preaching. And some people are already crying because that is what the word of God did. It just revealed their life to that minister. That's what the word of God can do. Paul said, I am not ashamed of you because it is the power of God was what? Unto salvation. If the word of God is in your mouth is not saving people, you need what? You speak the word. Something is wrong with us. And it's very important that the, and when you get to the place of prayer and you are praying, and the Bible says, call unto me, 
and I will answer thee. And there's no answer. You need what? See, there's something that God has spoken about his word. That when they don't happen in your life, it is a sign. You need what? What are we not saying? Which means you have been doing something that is different. Raga. See, this morning we just we just pray. And now just say, ah, I saw something, and the Holy Spirit has said, ah, yeah, that's the confirmation. And immediately, maybe 10 minutes after that, and I, there's one rain there that wants to be dropping. Kai. I didn't tell anybody, I just goes to somewhere. I said, Ragada, in the name that is above rain, I was not saved by rain. If rain will save me, God will have descended an abundance of rain. But there is a name. Oh, Mark. I just said, the only thing said, okay, no problem. I just go out. Two minutes, rain stop. I said, Lord, I just went to where I'm going. <laughs> What's the meaning of that? By the grace of God, I was invited to somewhere to come and preach. And to come and interview, it was a night meeting. I wanted to go and preach there. And the day just started. The only goes, uh, yeah, the only thing enter it, you are going. I was just going. Jaga, jaga, yes. Hey, I was there. And I know, actually, I have to minister from 11 to 12 and 12 to 1 again. And it's just two ministrations, but the same place. And the Holy Spirit has given me the, his word. And said, the two, two things you are going there to go and say. Say this when it is 11 to 12 and say this when it is 12 to 11 to 1. And when I just finished 11 to 12, I finished 45 minutes to 12 in the midnight. I mean, 15 minutes to that, 11 45, to the, to the midnight. And I just came outside. Ragged, I begged to pray. Holy Ghost. When I just prayed for like 10 minutes, the Holy Spirit said, No problem. I went. The rain is still dripping. No problem. I think the Holy Spirit said, No problem. And I, because I want people to come for the, to the program. That's why I have to do it. Because when there's rain, people say, I don't know. I don't know. But there is something in me that I say. See, if the word God has said about this word is not happening in your life, you need what? You need revival. If I say tomorrow it's not happening, I will go back to my God. I have, see, I don't think it's wrong with me, Lord. See, we have had people, David, he said, I rejoice in thy word. As someone that see a great spoil, there is the power in the word. You speak the word and something not is not is not happening. There is something wrong with you. You need revival. That, that's why the God is a move, a simple mighty move of God. It doesn't make noise, but it's something when it happens, people will know this is the hand of God. Like what some people say, this is the finger of God. What are we now saying? They don't help us in Jesus' name. They don't help us in Jesus' name. When it shall come, hey, when it shall come. That's the Holy Spirit. You know, in our generation, we have to stand up. And I want to close. I'll just read some of the things the fathers of the old, what they did in their days. And we think we are doing something. We are not doing anything. We have to wake up on our slumber. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Come and look at what this man of God says. He said, You have to rise up. Strengthen the feelings. What are you doing? There's something in you. You have to stir up the Holy Ghost in you. We have to say it up. I say, Lord Jesus. You know some people, you know, I, I want to encourage one and be praying, interceding. Just be praying to God. Lord, visit with goats. Some people are not baptized with the Holy Spirit. It's very difficult for God to move in their life. That is, you know, the Spirit of God is the power of God. The Bible says you shall receive the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. Now, the power means the Holy Ghost. That's the interpretation of that Holy Power. God does not have any power except by his spirit. And the Bible says it's not by power nor by might, but by what? By my spirit. Say the Lord. So tell me something the experts want to do in this life. Except you are contacted at the of the Holy Ghost, you cannot do anything. Except you want to go a double leaky way. Go to the Babala world, they will do something for you, but that is not the Holy Ghost. Let them encounter the Holy Ghost, they will fly out. What are we saying? In our days, we don't aspire again. See, the mighty move of God we are talking about can only come by the Spirit of God. Check your life. What is happening in your life? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Strengthen your people once. And weakness. I want to let you go. There's an encouragement to them. Strengthen. There's a spirit in you. You have the spirit of God in you. The Bible says, for you are believing the Holy Ghost. It's a seal of what? Of redemption. What are we saying? 
We need to wake up. If it is the only thing you will be saying, Lord, <coughs> Lord, if the only thing you will be saying is, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit, just pour out. And all God will be saying to you, go and reconcile with that brother or what that sister that you are fighting with. Repent. You have to be broken. Submit yourself to submit yourself. Some people, that's this how we are. We can, nobody can speak to us in the church. And you expect God to just pour out something in you. It's not possible. I want to quickly round up. We need to revive in love. Let me just mention that before I go to the reading out something. We need to revive in love. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, will make us to understand that for this fruit of the spirit is what? The first thing is love. love. Amen. 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 So, that was something that for the fruit of the spirit is love. Was we'll speaking to us that there's revival in love. When last we'll see a lot of us in the, in the church, we are deceiving ourselves. We don't love one another. We brotherly love. And you think the Holy Ghost will not be poured down. No matter how you pray, go and settle with that. How do you know? The Bible says, have brotherly affection towards one another. For bearing one another. Love. Revival in love. See, love was generated in our... This is how we could... This is why we, we see less of God. You see fabulous brothers in the, in, in the house of God. Fabulous sisters, they can pray like what? Look, check their life. The evidence of the word of God is not yet active in their life. Why? There is something wrong. Holiness. Run away from the things of the world. How many of us are doing that? Now let me just say something that the sense and order that we in this generation we are craving for is an exact of a spiritual life that is active. See, if Peter was not, if Peter was not active, his shadow can never heal anybody. How many places your shadow have gone? How many people my shadow? How many people my shadow has killed? Out of shadow today, see shadow are moving. Stand up, you see a shadow. Let people because when somebody come today, maybe it will be. There is something we have to go and check in our life. This generation must rise up. For every generation, God wanted to move. Every generation. What are we now saying? But this generation, we are the youth. There is still, I mean, there is still strength in this time. Let's go back to our Creator. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let me just read down some things so that we will challenge our faith. We think we are somewhere and we are nowhere. We have to rise up. I just caught some people there. Let me just read this to you. Thank you very much. According to Charles G. Finney, was a great revivalist. He said something. I quote him. He said, "Prevailing or effectual prayer is that prayer which attains the blessing that it seeks." Let me repeat. Prevailing or effectual prayer is that prayer which attains the blessing that it seeks. It's that prayer which effectually, effectively move God. The Bible says something in the book of James chapter five verse fifteen through sixteen. He said, "For the prayer of faith." No, no, no. That's not the previous verse. We're talking about the prayer of a righteous man. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man. Do what? It availed much. Praise the living Jesus. So, Charles D. Finney was actually saying to us that that prayer that moved God is an effective prayer. A lot of prayers are going, they are, not move, they are not moving God at all. They are not, they are not even moving God. Look, at, I can't go to Collins. To Collins. He said, I spent Friday in secret fasting. Meditating and prayer for help on the last day. About the middle of the summer, a man, a man cried out. At the cry, at the cry, my soul ran over. I fell to prayer. Nor could we preach anymore for cries and tears all over the chapel. We continue in intercession and, and salvation came. Maybe I should read it again. He said, I spent Friday in secret fasting. Meditating and prayer for help on the day on the last day. About the middle of the of the summer, a man cried out. At the cry, my soul ran over. I fell to prayer. Nor could we preach. I fell to prayer. No, we could we preach anymore 
for cries and tears all over the chapel. We continue in intercession and salvation came. Then when they got to the middle of the sermon, so shouted, I began to cry. There was a deep conviction in the heart. He could not resist. He began to cry. Today you will see people today, after they have done a lot of rubbish thing, in the church of God, they are doing boyfriend and girlfriend, and the Holy Ghost will now become me. I will move. No, it's not possible. It's never possible. It's never possible. It's never possible. I'm going to shout G finish again. Let me just quote this one. The old man was praying in his shop. A powerful revival followed. Thus, this old family man prevailed. And as a, as a priest, had power with God. Which means, it doesn't matter if you cannot speak well. What, what matters is prevailing prayer. God bless us in Jesus' name. That old man was, he was praying in his job. And what happened is that something followed. A sign followed. It was a stammering. I'm not talking about a stammering. And God, even it doesn't matter, he will do what? We hear him. The major thing is that the Lord wants to do what? He wants to work in our days. Let me say again. Another word of Charles G. Finney, he said, he slowed me down with great agony. As I returned to my room, I felt almost as if I should stagger, stagger under the burden that was on my mind. And I struggled. I groaned and agonized, but could not frame to present the case before God in words, but only in groans and tears. The spirit struggled within me with groanings that could not be uttered. It was groaning. Now, in groanings, you don't speak sometimes. Just in, mm. Hmm? Sometimes. Because there's something in you that is bigger than words. It cannot be expressed. So, brethren, the Lord, this morning, I mean this afternoon, and I want to call you also that you have, we have to wake up on our slumber. When the disciple prayed, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 13, there about, and the Bible says that as they gathered together, they prayed, and the place where they prayed shook. And they were and they received the Holy Ghost afresh. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now let me read this one. According to Richard B B um, Baster. He said, If your heart be not set on the end of your labors, it means if you if you are a preacher, you are a chorister. And what the utmost thing that's supposed to matter to you is that when you sink, people are falling down to cry for their sin. See, many of us today will sing and nothing will happen. It's very good we sing melodious songs. But what is the outcome? This is the presence, it's not the presence of a king, it's the presence of the Lord. If you, are, if you don't have a target in your life, I say, if you don't have a target that after my preaching, I want sinners to come to repentance, set a target. After my singing, after my teaching as a Sunday school or a Bible study teacher, there's an expectation. There's an expectation. Even though you've started it and it starts to continue. The Lord will in Jesus' name. Just to round up, my time is almost finished. So I cannot tell how they get their time over who can drag on and see no fruit. Were that so in my case, I should be ready to conclude that I was out of my place. If I preach and there's no fruit, I'm not here. I'm not here. That's according to Tos Taylor. Pray the Lord us in Jesus' name. Amen. Such was also the let me just read another thing. Such was also the experience of the early church. Now they had 
this was according to Acts chapter 2, we're talking about it. Long time. Therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. I just said it. And the last one is that in Acts chapter um, 14, verse 3, the Bible says something, and they prayed that signs and wonders should be happening. And what happened? And the Lord answered their prayer. Let's challenge ourselves. We have not got to the level of praying for the sick. And the sick is healed. Let's start one day. Let's start one day. We have not got to the pray to be of pray. You know, when I was, I was when I was in the, in the school, in the tertiary institution, I actually I there was a particular time, let's just say capital to, un, to understand. I just want to tell you so that you understand the power, the power of the spirit of God. And I wanted to do a test. And I, 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 I perceived that all the lecturer was just speaking, was just teaching us I could not understand. And I took the book. That same lecture note, I took it. I went to a place, a lonely place, to go and pray. And I began to just be speaking to the books. Speak it down, pray in the understanding. Father, oh yeah, open my understanding. What is the matter? Ah, I carry something inside. What is that happening? After 10 minutes of the prayer, I opened the book again. I said, ah, I, this thing you are here, I do not know you. Eh? As I just read it, I stood up. Oh yeah, you know, test it, yeah. I just get there and I scored the highest in the class, almost 80 class. Ah, what is happening? And the devil will be playing us as if we don't know what is happening. So the result must follow. That is the Revival we are talking about. When you don't see that, you need what? Go and meet God. Let's rise up on our feet. So we're going to the aspect of questions and likes. But I just want you to just pray to God. All I need is Jesus. Is the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost. Is the Holy Ghost. That's the prayer you want to pray. All I need, O oh Lord, revive me. And if you are here and you know that you see above one sin. Or the other in your heart, this is the time to settle with God because God will not answer anyone that tear about his sin, sin in his heart. And you want to try, you want to bribe God, it's not possible. You need to rise up and say, Lord, I am confessing those sins today. You are fighting with somebody and you are still like, I will not greet him. Ah, you have stopped the move of God in your life. It's better you do what you release yourself to God. The prayer you want to pray is that Lord, I just see outpouring of the Spirit. Outpouring of the Outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Father, I just need that. Tell him this generation is dying. Ah, how many people are going to hell every day? Nobody to preach to them. There is no conviction. But God is not happy about it. I want to believe you are praying. I want to believe you are praying. Say, Lord Jesus, something must happen in my life. So I leave the spirit outpouring, except there is an outpouring. In the last day, ah, except in my, it was when the children of Israel, they repented. When you read that, God chapter 2, when you get to verse 28, and he said, in the last day, I will pour out, because they have repented. They have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 I want us to sing these songs. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit, Spirit of the living God.
song say, break me, mold me, make me, build me, yes, spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me. Break me, mold me, build me, make me, yes, spirit. Holy Spirit, wherever they are, begin to touch them. Holy Spirit, begin to touch them right now. 
they have come empty. That defeat them now in the name of Jesus. Stir up a fire in them. Amen. Holy Spirit, let there be a steering now. Amen. A steering. A steering. A steering. A steering. A steering. A steering. In the name of Jesus. Some people are here, they are facing that challenge in their Christian journey. But from this moment, they will see a change. And that change has come. Amen. When they go back to where they came from, people will see their face. It will shine more than the face of Moses. Amen. With unfading glory. Amen. Dry bone, leave. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Dry bone, leave. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are revived. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray as God has raised you up. You will never fall again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we bless your name. You, Spirit of the living God, breathe afresh on me. Spirit, Spirit of the living God, breathe afresh on me. Spirit, Spirit of the living God. God have touched our life today. Our life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Let us have our seats. I want, we are going to question and answer segment. Maybe we have question. We can raise up our hand or we should go and meet the usher. Write it down. Write your question. Bring, bring it out to this place. We'll be able to check out your question. So question and answer segment. Anyone that have a question, you can kindly raise up your hand. Is there any question? I want the guest speaker of teachers. Maybe you have. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have two questions. One of is that what can cause the backslider of a believer? And the second one is how can we quickly discover our falling as a youth? Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And the guest speaker is coming to answer the question. Maybe we, one of us have the answer to the question. Okay, brother me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible made us to know in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 that he that stands should be careful lest he fall. So what can cause this backsliding is that if a person didn't take conscious of what he or she has, I mean the Holy Spirit, if that person is not in conscious of that Holy Spirit, it is very possible for that person to fall. The Bible made us to know in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27, that look at how mighty men are falling and how the weapons of war perish. So unconsciousness can cause can causes backsliding and falling. So my advice for us is that in this end time, we must be conscious. We must be conscious of everything so that we won't fall. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. And the first thing you have to understand that backsliding comes from the heart. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if what means backsliding means if you are, let me give you an example. If it is possible, it's not possible, but let's look at this. You are your growth is like this spiritually today. And uh, tomorrow you now, you now discover that. Okay, let's okay, let's use a praying time now. You can pray to this level for like you can pray 30 minutes. And the subsequent week, maybe the next day, you know, because it's, it's not difficult for you. To pray, even five minutes prayer is a show 
that you have come back. There's something you have left doing. Are you getting it, man? So, the point at that point, you no, know, I said something the other time. When what the Lord said about his word is not happening again, it must be happening before, but it's not, it's not happening again. That person has gone back. Are you getting it, man? So, what if you have been praying today for 30 minutes and tomorrow you, you see yourself, the enablement of Christ, that power in you, just is helping you. You just move to one hour. It's a sign that you are growing. You are not bastarding at that stage. If you have been loving your brother before, and all of a, all of a sudden, a threat came in, it's a sign of bastarding. What happened to you at that stage? You have to go back to God. Something is wrong, Lord. I need to be settled again. So that you can pump back to that stage. God bless you. What is the second question? Yes, I say, when what God said about your about his word, it's not happening again. It's difficult, difficult for you to love your brother again. You must know, ah, and you just think there is a hatred in you. Ah, immediately go back to God. Say, Father, hatred has come again. I am sending it back to the air. It doesn't belong to you. But the Bible says, you begin to call the word of God. The Bible says, God, my body my, is the temple. Of the, it's the Holy Spirit that was doing it. And that's love. Holy Spirit is love. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sir. And we have one question here. We, we say is, uh, when someone is praying for repentance and God is not answer, answer the prayer, what is the causes? Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Three stages you must understand about, about repentance. Praise the living Jesus. Let's, another mic. God. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Amen. Alright. Now, there are some saying that they are unto God alone. Are you getting me? Now, if you go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry, God will forgive you. Now, there are some saying that they are to other individual. Now, the two people are involved in this situation. Please get this very right. You go to God. Lord, forgive me. The next thing God will tell you is that before that repentance, that forgiveness can be complete, go back to your brother and do what? And reconcile. Except you go back to that brother, that repentance is done. I mean, it's not genuine. Then there are some sin that it is in the public. You have to come and confess. Now, on the second level, let me just quote the scripture. The Bible says, Can we confess your fault to one another? James 5. From 14 to 16, therefore, you see there. Now, the third one is public confession. See, God will not jump protocol because of you. Because you are, we think that God will lower his standard because we are coming to ask for forgiveness. God has a way. He has a standard. He's, he has put down. If you have sinned against the church of God, God will expect you to come. Tell the church, I have lied against this church. I am sorry. And immediately, ever will re remove that cancel it. You need to come where you have what? You have done it. You might say there are some to God alone. There are some to your friend. You have to go and meet your friend. So that two of you are no more having. And another thing is that a public one that you know that you have offended everybody. Come to them. When they see you, in fact, ah. You know, Jesus Christ actually told us. He said if you want to go and offer your gift, and you remember that there's a brother at home. And you, you don't, you ah, you better don't deceive yourself. You say you are paying one thing in the other. Go back and tell him that I am sorry. And come back again. Jesus, just to find us over. Praise the living Jesus. So Jesus will not lower his standard because of us. Because we want to go and meet God. God bless us in Jesus' name. It's the Lord. I hope, I hope the person is satisfied. Mm. Satisfied. Yes. And we don't know the person actually. Uh, the next question is, uh, is there any sin that cannot be forgiven? Okay, praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to believe that the person is talking about sins that cannot be forgiven. Now, Jesus Christ was actually teaching us something about the sin against the Holy Spirit. Now, when Jesus Christ was on earth, the Spirit of God was not given to believers. Amen. 
Now, he was actually saying something towards the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now, you must understand that um, there are some saying that, okay, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is so deceived. You will be punished. No forgiveness for that. Now, Paul was actually speaking and he said, grieve not the Holy Ghost. Now, the spirit of God in us is wonderful. But the other side of it, if you do rubbish to, to him, Paul was actually admonishing that, hey, Holy Spirit that you are the best that follows you with the Holy Spirit. In fact, he will rub, he will rub all his benefits upon you. Long life, anything you need, he will rub it upon you. But no, don't do what? Don't grieve him. Now, remember that when the Holy Spirit came down on Jesus, he was represented like what? Like a dove. Do you understand the dove? The, the dove, they don't need by that much. They are very strong, but they don't need by that much. Now, if you just do like this to them, they do what? Fly away. But they are the most meek. So, do not do what? Do not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. If something, if you don't understand something about, about, about what is happening somewhere, about what is happening somewhere, because you must understand that the spirit that is given to you is not just a spirit. It's not the spirit of the world. It's what? It's God himself. Yes, it's that you are speaking against God. And if anybody say anything against God and God is not punishing you, who will you, will you run to? Because we always, most of the time we don't know that it is God we are dealing with. We just think it's one spirit like that. Like just, it is God. It is God himself we are dealing with. It's the Holy Spirit. It's God, the Spirit of God. So we must unlearn how to deal with the Holy Spirit. How to fellowship. Paul said, and the fellowship, the best language that the Holy Spirit understands is fellowship. Yes. Communion. Speak with him. Come and play with him. Say, Father, I have just come. We begin to sing. The Holy Spirit, I, you are fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He loves it a lot. But you carry the things of God and you are going back to fornication. Yay! The Holy Spirit will, will not be happy with you. The Lord will in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's another one here. As a youth that is trying to accept the revival of God, but the environment that he or she find is safe. That is how you write it here. Is safe is among the unbeliever that is drawing the person back. What can that person do? Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, there's something that is very sure. We had a sample in the scripture, even in the Old, Old Testament. A sample is Enoch. Out of the nation in the old world, it was only one person. And the Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. How, did it, how was it possible for him to walk? The Bible said he was walking by faith, by believing in God. Now, if you know your faith is not strong, the person should, should note this. If you know your faith is not strong enough, what you should be crying is that, Lord, I need a faith higher, an, an higher faith. Because it will require faith for you to do what? To stand. Look at Joseph. In the time of Joseph, it was only Joseph that was upright at that place. And one woman, one rubbish, one want to rubbish his destiny. And he said, what? see, I am not here to rubbish. You will take your stand and it's the Holy Spirit that will help you. Please, Holy Spirit is the major thing. Partner with the Holy Spirit. Before they do it, it will reveal to you. Just partner with him. Many of us, we don't know how to go and get books on the Holy Spirit. Get Kenneth again how to be led by the Holy Spirit. You need it. Get books. How to hear from the Lord. How to relate. A lot of books. Some people have an experience that you can get learn from them. Many of us, we don't, we spend our money on many things, on phones, on the lights. We don't buy a single book like this about the Holy Spirit. I want to relate with it. It's not possible. The power you need to above them was, is the Holy Spirit. I don't need, I, I don't think I need to emphasize on that. Just go and get the spirit. Be filled of the spirit. Come and look at what the Holy Spirit will do in you. They will see you like that. They will be running away. Not that they will run away physically like that, but they will say, you are so different. You are just different. That's what they will be saying to you. God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's another, another question here. He said, is there any, okay, okay, is there anyone that Holy Spirit cannot be give, give unto? Unto. So, what's your cost here? All right, I, think, I guess the person is asking that if there's anyone that, anyone can, that cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Praise God. 
Now, Hallelujah. you must understand that there is a gateway through which the Holy Spirit will come. The first gateway is the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be converted, be saved. Someone said that the promise of Jesus, salvation is to the whole world, but the Holy Ghost is only for the believers. I don't know if you, if you got that. Jesus promised salvation everybody. But for you to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to believe in Jesus Christ. And when you, when you, even before you get baptized in water, you can even receive the Holy Spirit. It is evidence in the scripture. So the major thing is that open your heart, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the entrance that the Holy Spirit is looking for. And you are praying. You know, when I started the, the race of this, uh, the Christian journey, I have a friend then, the Lord connected us together, and the only thing he be telling me, the major thing he emphasized on is that, bro, Sunday, you need the Holy Spirit. And if I, when I heard that, I begin to pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I just need the Holy Spirit. It wasn't a day, second, one week. It was like months. Then I received it. So the entrance that the Holy Spirit is looking for that, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Are you, are you sure you have repented of your sin as you promised the Lord Jesus Christ? So if that is okay and you believe, yes, he will save you. If that, now, what I'm seeing is that the person that's not understood the concept of salvation, the person who meets your pastor, asks your pastor, what is the meaning of salvation? Until you get the concept where the Holy Spirit is not yet entering. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir. There's, there's another one here. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, why do we experience arrogance and pride among the youth today? Okay, praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, for every youth, you must understand at this age, you have the ability. Now, okay, for a person that is still like having that spirit of pride and likes arrogance in his life, it's because the person has not yet, uh, the, his eyes of understanding, number one, is that he has not opened. He has to go and pray for light. According to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, 18, 19, saying that if your eyes of understanding will be able to open. Now, that's number one. Number two is that Paul said in the book of uh, Romans chapter number seven, I guess, in, 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 in another 20 something, he said, he said, To whom you submit yourself to, to whom you are what? You are slave. Praise the living Jesus. Now, if you submit yourself to pride, now, I, I used to tell people, whenever you notice what God has not commanded the Spirit of God in us, if you notice it in your life, go and tell God. This city has all the world. I know I submitted myself to him. He will never enter except you submit yourself to him. It might be that the Holy Spirit will be telling you that why can't you humble yourself before that brother? He said, No, I know who I said. He to him. Immediately you are doing that. You are already submitting yourself to that spirit of pride. And so there's a, there's a law in the spirit realm. To whom you submit yourself, even as a believer, understand this. Jesus Christ will be incapacitated to save you if you submit yourself to unrighteousness. That's the law of the Spirit.